What's up guys, Joel Adams with Iridesium and I am back with another pretty dense tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a black hole. Now we are not going to be recreating the super detailed high resolution image that NASA released of a black hole. Instead we are going to be creating a more attractive black hole and that is the one from Interstellar. The majority of this tutorial is going to be making materials and that can be a pretty time consuming process so I'm going to be moving a little bit fast. And I can also guarantee you there's almost no puns in here. So let's jump right in and start pulling stuff together. So I'm going to open up a black uh, new scene, then I'm going to hit A, X, delete, or you could just scale it all to zero. Then I'm going to go Shift A, add mesh, and add in an icosphere. I want to turn up its resolution, maybe something like five, right click, shade smooth. We're done modeling our black hole. So let's now go and open up a new window here. I'm going to switch this to the shader editor. Now I'm going to go to the world settings, set this to black, and we'll add in a, a plane. This plane is just to preview the effects of our black hole shader. Go ahead and switch to rendered view and then switch to cycles. I'm going to make this plane an emission, just like that. And then I'm going to select the black hole. New material. I'm going to delete the principled and add in a refraction BSDF. Plug this into the surface. And this is what we've got. So you can see that there is sort of a black hole in there somewhere. I'm going to actually control the index of refraction here with a Fresnel node. So let's go input and add in a, um, a layer weight actually. Plug the facing value into the index of refraction here. And you can see our entire sphere has now become a black hole basically. If you turn this up, something like 0.9, you can start to see uh, something that sort of resembles a black hole. However, what we want is for this accretion disk to sort of bend over the top. So let's add in a converter, color ramp, and turn up the size of the black hole. Look at the refraction. Yeah. So this center is the black hole itself. And instead of going from black to dark gray and then to white, we want it to go from completely black, which is the black hole, to a really bright white and then to regular white. So in order to do that, I'm going to add in a converter, math node, and set it to divide and set the top value to 1. Go ahead and control shift click on the refraction. And now we're kind of getting it. We've got the accretion disk, or what is going to be the accretion disk, bending over the top. The black hole is sort of uh, reflecting itself, and we don't want that to happen, so go under visibility. And if you're in cycles render, you should be able to uncheck all of this. So it's just the camera. Now you've got this, and it looks pretty good, other than the fact that there's like this slight gray color here and that's just because our refraction BSDF is not set to completely white. Go ahead and set that to completely white and now it should look correct. So now we're going to add a photon ring and in order to do that I'm just going to add in an emission shader, duplicate this layer weight, add in a shader, mix shader, plug that in here and then plug the facing in again right here. I'm going to set this to bluish maybe and up to maybe five so then let's go converter color ramp and you want to drag this forward first of all drag this forward and then add another flag right here make it black make this middle one completely white turn its contrast up and you want it to be very very thin if that's not thin enough you can just move this all back and add in a second color ramp and then crank this up till it's thin enough and I'm, I'm going to leave it at this something pretty extremely thin so go ahead and delete this plane now that the black hole is done it's time to create the accretion disk and for that I'm going to add in a cube S Z to scale it down and S shift Z to scale it out and we get this. Now I'm going to go into the shader editor again, hit new for a new material, and I'm going to delete this principled, add in a shader, principled volume, and plug this into the volume here. First thing I'm going to do is turn the density to zero, and then I'm going to turn up the emission strength to one, just so we can see it. That looks nice. 
I'm going to add in a texture, gradient texture, change this to spherical, and hit Control T to add in texture coordinates here. If you have Node Wrangler enabled, you're going to be able to do that. Go ahead and plug this into our emission color, and you've got that. I'm going to plug this into the object, and that should give us this. So that that's basically our accretion disk. So that looks not bad. It needs texture now. So if I go and add in a texture noise, I'm going to duplicate this setup here, and I'm going to set the Z scale to zero. If we control shift click on this, basically what that's going to do is it's going to give us a giant infinitely tall cylinder, and that's exactly what we want. I am going to plug this into the vector, and if you control shift click on that, it's now spinning the Veroni around. If you add in a color mix RGB, you can plug that in with the original result to sort of help the spin chill out a bit. So you want it to be spinning pretty good, not too much, but um, enough so that it's obviously looks like it's spinning around the black hole. Duplicate this, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this in here as well. Control shift click on it turn the scale up. Now I can go color, mix RGB, mix these two together, and you can choose any of these. I'm going to try overlay, see what that does, and then I'm going to control shift D to duplicate this one more time, turn this up to maybe 20, and color, mix RGB, set it to overlay, Try that. You want to kind of add some detail. Maybe I'll set it to 60. So you can add other textures as well. I think in some of the other materials I made, I actually used a Mosgrave. And you can keep doing this to add more detail to the black hole, but I'm going to leave it at this and mix this in with the original result. So if I go and plug this into the emission color, we get that. And it looks fine, but there's no fall off like there was with this. Um, so what you need to do is add in a color, mix RGB, plug this into here, mix, multiply. Crank that up. Now what's happening is you've got this gradient texture, which is already got really dark edges and a white inside. And uh, it's getting this all multiplied with it. and um, you've kind of got this nice fall off. So because we made this into a really tall cylinder, there's there's no Z depth. So if you turn this back to one, it's gonna give you all that depth back. Now it's gonna give it to you really squashed. So now there's too much um, detail on the Z. Basically it's it's been squashed. So I'm gonna turn this down until it looks um, closer to right. Point one looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it at that. So now you can go converter, color ramp, and this will control your fall off. I'm going to set it to B spline and crank that up to here and then maybe move this forward a bit and then this to make the the inside brighter and the and the fall off more gradual basically. Add in another color ramp. Crank this up. Maybe I'll turn this strength up. Now let's color it. I'm going to add in another flag here and set this to, um, I'll maybe go with some interstellar colors. Something like that. Something like that. Now I can go here to the white value and make that reddish. And I can set this value to 2. And that would make it brighter. So this looks really good, and it's rendering nice and fast. However, there's no real thick materials in here, so you can see the bottom of the black hole right through it. It's just all light. It's all additive. And I want some actual debris inside that sort of blocks out the light from the bottom. So the way we're going to do that is with this density. Um, so if I just go ahead and plug this right into the density and add in a converter, math node, set this to multiply, and crank this up. 
maybe 100. You've got this, which looks okay, but it's basically it's the same exact place where the light is being applied is getting volumetric detail as well, and that's not working out too well for us. So you've got to change it. You've got to offset it a little bit. So either the light needs to be on top or just inside of the volumetrics. So you could just offset it with a color ramp. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, sort of mess with the actual texture here. So what we can do actually is we could recreate this whole thing. Um, so if I were to just grab all these nodes and duplicate them up here, uh, control J again, then you get this and this is the same exact setup here. However, we want it to just change it up just a tad. So what you can do is you can just mess with the scale of all of these. So maybe I'll turn this down to four. I'll turn this one up a tad. This one uh, down a bit. And now it should be offset enough that we're not gonna get some direct overlapping. So now what you wanna do is you wanna grab this same thing. So if I go color, mix RGB, plug this in here and this in here and set it to multiply. Now we've got the same fall off that we're getting for this. Um, you could actually grab this one, turn this up, and plug this into here. Take that out. Yeah, so now you can see that it's not overlapping exactly, and we're getting something that's much nicer. And it's blocking out the bottom part of the black hole. So that's pretty cool. Now if we add in a light sun, we don't necessarily need to use this in the final render. I'm just going to set it to 12 so that we can actually look at our volumetrics and see what's going on. So I'm going to set this to maybe a thousand, something like that. Now, one other thing that I want to do is make sure that the center of the black hole is mostly light and the edges are mostly darker, as if when it gets closer to the black hole, it starts spinning maybe faster and heating up more. Add in another color ramp here, set that to multiply is fine, converter and color ramp. Plug this in here and this in here. And then I'm going to invert this so that the color ramp is actually flipped. And if we're multiplying that on top, then what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that the inside has um, less volumetrics, something like that. Now what I can do is go to my render settings, go under um, volumes, and set this to 0 0.03 just to see um, more detail and let's see what it looks like without the sun so now I'm gonna turn this down to maybe a hundred maybe 300 you can go to a thousand if you want you're gonna to want to set this even lower probably 0 0.1 0 0.01 sorry and then you're gonna to want to turn this strength up as well so maybe 50 I'm going to actually drag this forward Turn this one saturation up. I'm now going to pick a camera angle, so shift a mesh camera, and I'm going to go something like this, maybe control alt numpad zero. If you go far away and then zoom in, it's going to look like a telescope shot. So um, I'm going to go ahead and render this out, and then uh, I would really recommend doing some compositing when you're done. Compositing is really important, and you should get good at it just because it can really take your image to the next level. Anyways, that's basically it. You can see that it's actually quite simple to create a good-looking black hole. It's almost all in the accretion disk. Another trick I did is I actually added in a couple planes with a star texture on and then I just animated those to spin constantly, turned on motion blur, and that made it look like there was a ton of spinning debris inside the black hole, which I thought looked pretty cool. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. I would like to encourage you to join the Iridesium community. They helped me get the look of this black hole dialed in. And if you have questions or problems, you are much more likely to get answers in the Discord just because I'm not terribly active on YouTube. Join the Iridesium community with the link in the description. It's definitely one of the best communities I have ever been in. And uh, if you make a cool black hole, I would really love to see it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.